Okay, so just some quick review of data. This is in case you have to deal with parents or, or others. The TIMS comparisons, the US did poorly in the second TIMS comparison, did just as 40 in the third. Things haven't gotten better compared to other industrialized countries. But at the same time, if you look at NAEP scores, the bottom line is fourth grade NAEP, the top line is eighth grade NAEP. I didn't include 12th grade NAEP because nobody has much confidence in a test given in the middle of the senior year. <laughs> They're still trying to solve that problem. But when you look at the data, it's clear kids are not attempting. So this data is very good, though. It shows from 89 to 05, it goes from 213 to 238 in fourth grade. And the 07 data is now out. I think it's 240. It's up another two points. It goes up every between every test. It's getting better and better. Eighth grade, same thing. And these gains are not small. Look at the difference in 89 between fourth and eighth grade. And then look at the difference between fourth and 89 and fourth and 05. It's closed almost half the difference between fourth and eighth grade. It's about a two grade level difference. That's a big difference. If you go back to the 70s, there's an, a different NAEP test that hasn't changed. It's exactly the same. It's a very old fashioned test, mostly negative arithmetic and stuff. It tells a similar story. The gaps, the gain is not as strong, but every decade stronger than the last. So we put this together and what do you get? Somehow the reporters don't quite do that. Let's see, our competitors are beating us. They're beating us a while ago, they're still beating us. But we're doing better than we ever have. So if we were a business, what would we do? Let's stay with the status quo, or let's go back to what we used to do? I think what we do is say, let's go take a close look at what our competitors are doing to beat us, and learn from it, and do something different. No foundation for any future math but which uh, clutter their heads and put them in a disposition to, do I remember how to do it? No, quit. Which is sort of what, over time, that's more and more kids wind up that way. <coughs> okay, so, and, and that's, oh, well, okay, I'm leaving a lot out, but that's, that's where I'm gonna stop, because <laughs> uh, time is up, but that's my guess on what you, a district that's has gotten as far as you've gotten, which is very far, the thing to kind of focus on at next. How to teach the new math with today's problem, but the whatever's in the curriculum, rather than just have an answer getting process going on in the classroom. And I'm going to turn it over to um, a, a national expert on Washington standards. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're, you're, you're an expert? <laughs> <laughs> so, a mathematician at the University of Texas. Uh, so I met a lot of you. I'm a Marie Trisman. Um, and I was foolish enough to sign up for <laughs> managing the process of rewriting the Washington math standards, which uh, my colleagues are working on today. And um, there's a... Writing standards is like being a character in a Russian novel. <laughs> Everybody has a bad time, and then you die. <laughs> I, spent last, I spent last night with three and a half hours with an army of where's the math people who had Googled me to death and found every single positive thing that I had said about connected math or things of this sort. I was on the original team that did the development you know, as an advisor. And their idea is that Anything you ever said or believe in your whole life, you're responsible for it. Right? And when I Googled myself, I actually agreed with almost everything. Which is terribly disappointing. Because it means I haven't learned anything. It haven't changed your ideas. Goodness gracious. So you know, these, these metaphors actually are very positive things. People say that the, you know, when you're an educator and people are throwing rocks at you, you want to say, Let's get the politics out of education because the politics is really there. You go to the organizer who sent me the note, Shalomar Backman, and you get on the website and you discover that she's a signatory to the Alliance for the Separation of School and State, 
or when you go to their website, it says they'll have to pry our children from our cold, dead fingers. <laughs> but she has a nice note about you teachers. We're not your enemies. We'll help you transition into private schools. <laughs> so I mean, Google is a very interesting thing. What do you learn about support places? The worst strategy is supplementation, where you're not you're trying to teach kids what's being happening in the regular class a different way. That's the most common. So we'll see these students are struggling. So we'll use a different set of materials to help them learn. Plus, the evidence is still out on, but we know the supplementation one doesn't work. It's one of the one of the hard parts about conservatives is understanding what they're for, since they they seem to build their whole message on what they're against. I guess I, when I get a question all the time of using calculators and how that's hindering students from their growth, uh, having better computation skills, and just the the benefits versus the costs of letting them use the calculator, I think that's always a discussion that we have. Phil, Phil, yeah. Start. So let me answer it twice. One, if you're in a situation that's, a, let's call it a democratic situation, it's a political process. In other words, it's part of the math wars. The best advice is don't answer that question. You're being invited to fight a battle on a hill that's been custom made to turn you into a fool. And there's no way to win. So it basically, it, it general advice I give in the math wars, num vice number one, you have to realize that their strategy is to attack you, not your ideas. And they're going to fool you by making you think they're attacking your ideas. If they're attacking you, you don't defend yourself with ideas. Ideas are a poor, a poor weapon. What you really want to do is take away their best weapons. You want to disarm them. And that their two best weapons can be taken away very simply. You stand up and you're identifying yourself to this audience of worried and frightened parents, who you are, right? So the first thing you say is, I believe all students should know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide without calculators. That's the first thing you say when the calculator issue comes up. And everything after that, you, when they say calculators, you say technology. Do you think, when, if they ask you a question, after you first you say what I just said, then if they ask you about calculators, you say, well, technology is very important, but it's no substitute for mathematics.